everyone, it's Lisa from I Dream in Soap. Welcome to my channel and thanks for dropping by. Today I'm going to be making a dancing funnel soap. You know the one where you take some squeeze bottles and you squeeze lots and lots and lots of blobs of soap batter into a mould. I think I may have just looked like I was trying to milk a cow then. <laughs> oh well, never mind. Anyway, for my soap I'm just going to be using a normal loaf mould. Quite often with this technique, you'll see it's done in a slab mould. Also, I'm going to use dividers in mine so that I can change up what's going on as it goes across the bar of soap. Come on, let's go and make some soap. The colours I'm using today are Purple Heart from You Make It Up, Neon pink and antique silver, both from Mica Mama, and some titanium dioxide. Now normally when I'm mixing up colours, I'd make up a specific amount of colourant, usually at one teaspoon per pound of oils, and I'll pre-mix these with some lightweight oil, typically olive oil for me. Now for this soap, I'm actually going to be doing an ombre effect, so therefore I'm going to mix up an amount of colourant. I'm still just going to do it at just under the rate of one teaspoon per pound of oils because what I want to do is muck around and lighten these colours as I go through the various ombres. And then I'll prepare my squeeze bottles. Now I like these little eight ounce squeeze bottles because I find them nice and easy to squeeze. And I've just chopped the end off a pipette and taped them to my squeeze bottle. And then for my soap, I'm actually going to pour it in three stages. I'm going to be using some dividers and pouring one set of colours at a time. So I've worked out the oils and lye needed for my entire loaf and then I've divided it up. I haven't divided it exactly into thirds and that's because I'm going to have the dividers in my mould when I pour both of the outside segments and then I'm going to remove the dividers to pour the middle segment. So that middle segment will actually be slightly wider so I'm going to allow a little bit more batter in that middle part. Now for the dancing funnel technique you do need to have a batter that will stay fluid for quite a long time. So it's really important that you just stick blend to emulsion and then think about working out your colours. If you're unsure how to spot emulsion when you're stick blending, I've produced an entire video all about trace and emulsion and I'll leave a link to that in the description below. So I'm just going to do very tiny little bursts with my blender. I'm quite lucky my blender has variable speed so I can always have it down low. So just tiny little pulses and then stirring and then check for emulsion until I'm happy. And then because I'm doing an ombre with three shades of each colour, I'm just going to divide this first batch up into three equal parts. So just weighing the entire amount of soap first and deducting the weight of the jug. And then just dividing into three equal parts. So I'm just going to start preparing the ombre for my first third of the soap and I'm starting with the antique silver. Now in theory you're supposed to be able to do it quite scientifically where you take one drop of colour in one, two drops of colour in another, three drops of colour in another, that sort of thing and gradually get a darker colouring effect or start with the same colour base and gradually add one or two or three drops of titanium dioxide. However, I find, and I think quite a lot of people find as well, is that never seems to really work out that well. So I must admit, I do tend to just play around. I do obviously try and put less colouring in some than another, but I am just going to muck around and tweak them until I get a colour scheme that actually looks right. Thank you. 
and then I'll add my fragrance oil to each of the portions so just weighing it out to get the same amount I'm deliberately leaving my fragrance oil right to the end I know it's probably easier to pop it in right at the start to save mucking around with the individual measures but remember we want this to stay as fluid as possible so the fragrance oil that I'm using is called Galaxy of Stars and it's from Sensory Perfection in the UK. Now this is a really gorgeous fragrance but it's not one that I would probably normally use with a dancing funnel technique. Now it's definitely not something that accelerates badly you do typically get quite a lot of working time with it but it's not one of those fragrances that really has no effect on the trace at all this does speed up the trace a little bit and so apart from wanting to do something different to just a normal dancing funnel technique this is one of the reasons I've done my design as it is because it means I can just deal with a third of my batter at a time and I've only got to work with that for the time it takes me to get that into the mold without having to try and get a whole loaf poured before everything thickens up so if you've got a fragrance oil that doesn't accelerate trace at all, some of them even reverse trace a little bit, those would be brilliantly suited to this technique. So I then just transfer the soap into each of the squeeze bottles. And then because there's only a subtle difference between the shades that we've got here, I am actually going to mark the outside of the bottles just so I can see which one's which. So for the pour with a dancing funnel, you need to take your soap batter and drop little circles of soap into your mould. Now obviously I've divided my mould up into three parts, but normally you would do this quite often in maybe even a slab mould or certainly a whole loaf mould. So dropping down your even bits of batter and it helps potentially if you count to a certain amount. I'm counting to four seconds for each of my little blobs here. And then once you've done that colour, you want to drop another blob of colour right in the centre of that first one. So therefore you've got this sort of effect of one circle inside of another. Now you can carry on doing that as many times as you like and I'm going to do it with my three colours so that I have each circle with that sort of dark, medium and light ombre going through each blob. So then when we finish that first row we want to move on to the second and each time you start a new row you want to drop the new batter into the join as it were between the original circle so you're always piping onto that join line so you're getting a staggered effect and then as we did before just repeat with the other two colours And then I've just cut to the end of this little bit of the pour. And can you see here that my batter has actually thickened up? It's not terrible. I can still squeeze it out of the squeeze bottle. And I was actually expecting this to happen, which is why I'm just doing a third of the batter at a time, as well as trying to give myself a nice groovy design. Now I do find as you get towards the end of your squeeze bottles that it helps to not be putting them back on their bases so try and keep the batter towards the tip as much as possible and I do this by popping them upside down into a jug just so that the batter stays towards the tip of the bottle. I tend not to do it right from the start because at that point the batter is really fluid and we just run out into the jug. And you can see here the combination of that slightly thickening batter and the not having much left inside my squeeze bottles means I'm kind of having to just stagger the colours and do the blobs as the batter flows down into the tips of the squeeze bottles. But it's getting there and I managed to get them all done. So 
So once I'd finished, I did notice that the middle of the dividers were bowing out a little bit under the weight of the batter. So I've then just shimmied them up a little bit with some drink mats just to straighten everything up again. So once I was done with the grey side, I could then move on to the other side of the mould. So once again, I've just repeated the process. I've mixed up my batter just to emulsion. Then split off my colours into three once more and using pink this time I just played around until I was happy with the shades. Added the fragrance oil and then popped it into the squeeze bottles which I've washed up and reused rather than facing a whole load of squeeze bottles right at the end. So then I just started the pour as I did on the grey side. However, I did actually start pouring a little bit earlier. I was conscious that my batter on the grey side had really got a little bit thicker than I was happy with. So I started pouring at a lighter trace. But I pretty quickly realised that I really didn't have a trace at all. I was sort of still just working with an emulsified batter. And as I could see, as I was dropping the batter out of the squeeze bottles, it was just flooding and dispersing far too quickly. So therefore, I just stopped after I'd done that first row and just waited for that batter to get to a better trace. So a few minutes later, we were off and running with a much better trace. So just repeating what we did on the grey side. Now this does take a little while as we saw with the grey side and I can't imagine you want to sit through all of it so we'll just have a look at a little bit of it sped up a bit and then we'll move on to the third part. And as you can see that last bit's being a little bit tricky again trying to get those last little bits out of the squeeze bottle. Um, if you wanted to avoid this you could always make up an extra little bit of batter but then you're likely to have a little bit of wastage which you could always put into some other smaller individual soaps. And then just check that it was the same height each size so I can get a nice even bars and just covered it and just left it to sit for a while because I needed those to harden up enough to pull out the dividers safely. So I let everything set up for about three hours. I've made up all of my last lot of batter and put it in the squeeze bottles. So I'm just literally at the point that I want to start the pour and I'm going to therefore pull out the dividers. Hopefully by now everything should be set and we should have nothing slipping around. But also I want the sides next to the dividers, as it were, to still be quite moist. So I didn't want to expose them any earlier. Now I've just skipped forward towards the end of the pour for a couple of reasons really. First of all it was quite dark down in the middle of that mould so it was very difficult to see what was actually going on. And secondly, by now you're probably fairly blobbed out and there's only so much funnel pouring that you need to watch. As you can see here what I've done is I've changed up the design a little bit and I did this for two reasons. First of all, because I fancied it, fancy something different in the middle. But secondly was because I was a little bit concerned that if I tried to do exactly the same down the middle, it might look like I'd tried to line up the circles. And if they didn't line up perfectly, it might look a little bit naff in the end. Okay, so therefore, this was my solution for my middle row. If you've had enough funnel pouring by now, why not just skip forward to the cut? Otherwise, if you're still enjoying watching all the little blobs, I'm going to be quiet and just set this to music, speed it up a little bit just to finish off the pour.
Now at this point I haven't actually cut the soap, I'm sitting here editing and as soon as I've done this bit I'm going to dash downstairs and do the cutting. See you in a second. So here we are with the soap out of the mould and I'm still undecided whether to cut it so I've got it sort of horizontal or whether I've got normal vertical bars because it kind of looks pretty cool from both aspects. I may do half and half. One thing that I have got um, is because I had the dividers in, can you just see on the end bit of the soap here that I've just got those couple of little ridges where that end divider was just left in at the end. That's no problem because we always just normally trim off that very last little bit of soap, don't we? So I'll just pop that off and then we'll start cutting the rest. Oh no, looking at that end piece, that's really not helping with my decision. I really like the middle, it's really groovy, cut as a normal bar of soap, but I kind of was planning on doing it horizontal. Okay, I'm definitely going to do some horizontal because I want to see what they look like in the middle. So I'm just going to mark out the size of the bars that I want so I can then slice through the middle of the loaf. Now I am expecting that as I cut through the centre that the colours may not be that distinct at the moment and I'm hoping after they've dried a little bit they perhaps will look a little bit better but we'll see as they come through. So here's the first cut across the centre and yeah you can see those colours coming through but I do think and we'll see I'm going to leave it for a day and just see if that ombre starts to pop out a little bit more. I do kind of like the effect that you get all the way around the bar though. So I'm going to do one more as a horizontal cut and then I'm going to do the others as a normal vertical cut and then we'll have a look and you can maybe leave a comment in the comment section below about which ones you preferred. So let's just finish off by having a look at the bars the next day. These are the horizontal cuts, so as you can see, where they did dry out a little bit overnight, those colours did start to show up a little bit more and you can see the ombre effect a little bit better. And then the ones that I cut vertically, all very stripy all the way through. And then just to finish off, ones with a mixture of the two. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, it would be great if you left me a thumbs up. If you'd like to see what I'm making in the future, why not subscribe to my channel and maybe even click the notification bell. If you've got any questions or comments, please leave them in the comments section below. I'm always really good at getting back to people, so I will respond to your comment. Thanks for watching everyone. Happy soaping!